सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिनः सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चि दुःख भाग भवेत् ओ शांति 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 हरि ओम तत्सत् मे ऑल बी हैप्पी मे ऑल बी फ्री फ्रॉम डिजीजेस मे ऑल सी ओनली व्हाट इज गुड ने मे नो वन बी सब्जेक्ट टू मिजरी मे देयर बी पीस अबाइडिंग पीस एवरीवेयर by god's grace and the subject of my talk will be who am i a strange title isn't it but this question has perturbed the mind of all thinkers of all ages the among all the living civilizations hinduism is the long lasting living faith there are other faiths which are no longer alive such as the which belong to the culture of the egyptians in ancient times that culture got wiped out and along with that the religious faiths also are wiped out after that came the roman culture they had their own religious faiths and then much later came the greek culture this is among the western cultures that is the youngest greek culture and compared to the culture obtaining in india this greek culture is very very young it's cool i had to read about the greek culture and i had to read about socrates who is considered a great thinker of ancient greece socrates and socrates had a motto know thyself that was his motto know yourself i had the suspicion that he had got this idea from hindu culture because in hinduism this is an ancient thought atmanam vidhi no thyself no he you are isn't it strange that a person has to know who he or she is <laughs> because when a human child is born <coughs> the child is nameless then a name is given to the child and the child has to memorize that name and think that that is his or her name if a child's name is john then if you call john from behind the child will respond to it thinking that john means that child so person identifies himself or herself with his or her name and which is a given thing person was not born with the names i have been in seattle for more than 45 years i was sent by the headquarters of the ramakrishna order of monks to serve the children of god in this country and here i have had many experiences once one child came to our temple he was wearing a long robe 
and I asked that child, what are you wearing? Then the child turned around and on the back of that robe was written Superman. Then the child turned back toward me and said, I am Superman. <laughs> then he went on saying, I am Superman, I can fly through the air, I can kill tigers, lions, elephants, birds. <laughs> the child was saying all those things. It was doubtful whether the child could even skillfully kill a fly. <laughs> but that's what the child was saying. And he was not satisfied with being a man only. He wanted to be a superman. <laughs> this tendency to be limitless, the child knew its limitations but wanted to transcend its limits. That's why he wanted to be superman. And this is there in <laughs> modern culture also. In America, this is people are sometimes trained to brag about their own achievements or glories, which is not the case in an ancient culture like India. We would never <laughs> allowed to, we never be expected to brag about our achievements. I used to be a good student in the sense I used to study hard. and My results in school were very good. I used to stand first in the class, in most of the classes. And the schools had 10 classes at that time, not 12. And after that, one would go to the college. That means that is called intermediate class. And after that, one would go to the class of graduation, BA or BSc or BCom and so on. Anyway, we are not <laughs> expected to brag about our own glories. When I would stand first in the class and the results would be out and I would bring the, the progress report as it is to be called in those days. A certificate of which would tell how I have done in the examination. And I would stand first in most of the examinations. So then the neighbor would sometimes come and ask my father. How is this boy doing in school? I hear that he stands first in the class. <laughs> then my father would say, pray for him so that he, <laughs> he is not beaten by the boy who has stood second <laughs> in the next examination. He would never praise me. But in America it was different. When I was a young man, then at that time there was a, a great boxer in America. His name was Cassius Clay. And Cassius Clay used to say, I am the greatest. <laughs> he used to praise himself. We thought that was a little strange, but still that's what he used to do. Now I realized that his promoter most probably would ask him to say that, I am the greatest. Inflate one's ego, that is not considered good. In India we are taught to be humble. Anyway, when I was a novitiate monk, the Swami who was in charge of that center was Swami Swamiyananda. 
saintly Swami. He sent me and another novitiate monk called Ram Gopal to a place where, according to him, there was a saintly soul was there. And he was a monk. His name was Swami Premeshananda. And Swami Swamiyananda, when he was a young man, was greatly held by Swami Premeshananda. So he had great regard for him. He thought that as Nabhishet monks who are called Brahmacharis in India, he said, we should learn to become better monks. And that's why he sent me and Ram Gopal to a village in Bengal, several hundred miles away, in a village called Sargachi. And that's where Swami Premeshananda used to live. He was associated with a center, the Sargachi Vedanta Center. And so we, by train and bus, eventually we arrived there. And after arriving there, I saluted Swami Premeshananda. And Swami Premeshananda <coughs> asked me what my name was. But in our monastic tradition, we don't usually tell our pre-monastic names. <coughs> so he wanted me to tell him my pre-monastic name. Then I was hesitating. Then Swami Premeshananda said, I am an old monk. You may tell me your pre-monastic name. That will be all right. Then I told him my pre-monastic name. Then he asked me, where were you born? Then I named the city. Then he said, oh, you were born in that city. Do you know how large you were when you were born? I said to him, I don't think I was any larger than an average size baby. Then he, with his hands, he showed. He said, then you are this large. Then why are you saying that you are born in that city? The city occupies a very large area compared to the size of your body. Do you know why you say that? Because you are not satisfied with your limitation. You want to, want to transcend thy limitation. That's why you include the city as the place of your birth. Please. And then you think of the citizens, uh, think of the country in which you are born. Then you name that country. But there you should not stop. You should expand more and include the entire world. And that's where you are born. And when you are doing this, you are expanding your ego. And then he said, we are Vedantins. We are the monks of the Ramakrishna order. We have to expand until we know our infinite nature. By nature, we are infinity. And that infinity is divinity, according to Vedanta. That's what we are. So know yourself means know that you are infinity. Infinity is no other than divinity. Our scriptures teach, ekam eva adityam. One alone, without any second. That's what we are. Then the variety that we see around us, that is due to our imagination. Actually, we are one, that unity. We are like so many waves in an infinite ocean. And as long as we are identified with our forms, we think we are whales. But if we forget that we are, we have forms, then we come to know that we are that infinite ocean. So that is the teaching. That's why our elderly monks would tell some young monks that you belong to the Ramakrishna mission. 
which is actually Ramakrishna machine, ego crushing machine. Now let us try to know what ego is. Well, we know that the owner and the object owned cannot be the same. So I own my physical body, therefore as the owner I cannot be my physical body. The same way I cannot be my sense organs such as Chokshu Karno Nasika Jiva Tuak, that is the organ of sight, organ of hearing, organ of smell, organ of taste an organ of touch. No, I own them, therefore I am not any of them. The same way I am not any of my motor organs. What are the motor organs? Vag, Pani, Pado, Payu, Upastha. The organ of speech. And the organ with the help of which you grab things. That is a motor organ. And the organ which helps us to move around, that is our feet. And the organ which helps us to eliminate the digested fruit from our body, that means the anus, that is an organ. And then the organ which is used by people to urinate, that is that is also used to procreate. So these are called motor organs. So there are five sense organs and five motor organs. And there is another organ which is internal organ and that is the mind. And my idea of my individual existence is a thought of my conscious mind. So if I am not my mind as the owner of my mind, how can I be my ego? I cannot be my ego. So we have to get out of our idea of the ego. Atmanang Vidhi, who am I? I am not my ego. I am beyond it. What is beyond is divinity. Divinity is ekam eva dvitiyam. It, is, it alone exists without any second. I think this idea that we have to know ourselves, atmanam vidhi, the Greek culture borrowed, and that's why Socrates used to say that know thyself. That means, it was an idea borrowed from Hindu culture, it looks like. And the theistic scriptures, scriptures which believe in the existence of God, they all say that God is omnipresent, God is present everywhere. God is present in me, you, and the trees around me, and the objects around me, the same divinity is present in all. They are equally present but not equally manifest. Those who have minds, through their minds there is more manifestation of the divinity. That's why the human beings have more manifestation of divinity in them compared to the manifestation of divinity in trees, etc. But divinity is equally present everywhere. So the subject of my talk was a question, who am I? I am divinity. Atmanam Vidhi, know yourself. It's a person who had heard that everything is divine, everyone is divine. He once came to 
the divine incarnation, Sri Ramakrishna, and said to him, Deviate sir, if I am divine, why do I not know that I am divine? If I am God, how do I, why do I not know I am God? Then Sri Ramakrishna said to that person, whether you know it or not, you are God. To know that one is God, one has to manifest one's divinity 100%. Should not identify with anything else, such as the mind. That is, one has to transcend one's ego. And Sri Ramakrishna also taught some people who used to come to him, taught Replace your I with Thou. Thou means God. God, you are everything. God, you are everything. I am nothing. <laughs> and when a person experiences that, that everything is God, then that is called spiritual enlightenment. Uttishthata, Jagrata, Pratya, Varan, Nibodhata. Arise and become awake. You are so many sumnambulis. Become awake. And then finding the superior ones, become enlightened. Enlightened means get to know your divinity. And who are those super superior ones? The superior ones are those who have experienced divinity. And who are divinity in human form? Ramakrishna, Sarada Devi, Krishna, Rama, Buddha, and so many others are there. Even Jesus Christ, they are those superhuman beings. We are all, we all have divinity, as I often say. If we judge our divinity, compare our divinity with the light of a bulb, electric bulb, then some of our, us are five watt light bulbs, only that much manifestation of divinity. Some are 20 watts. And there are some who are 1000 watt light bulbs. They are considered to be saintly. And there are some multi trillion watt light bulbs. They are the divine incarnations. It is they who have taught us about what divinity is. This divinity. So who am I? Aham Brahmasmi. The scriptures of Hinduism say. Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahman. And Brahman means larger than the largest, and Brahman also means divinity. And that tendency is there in all, waiting to be manifested. One of our devotees has a grandson. And the grandson, when he was five years old, <laughs> his, his father at that time had some kind of surgery, so he was bedridden. Then <laughs> he <laughs> said to others, my father is bedridden, I am the boss now. <laughs> he was the boss, he was five years old. <laughs> he was not satisfied being a small child of five. I am the boss. My father is not the boss. I am the boss now. <laughs> this tendency to exceed limits is there in all because our nature is beyond limits. A person who has $500 in bag wants to increase that amount. So, person who is a, with the owner of $1,000 wants to 
be a millionaire. <laughs> and one who is a millionaire wants to be a multimillionaire. One who is a boxer wants to be the greatest boxer. That's like Cassius Clay. And he used to say, I am the greatest. <laughs> I am greater than all other boxers. Transcending the limits. That inherent tendency is there in all of us to transcend our limits. That's why we are not satisfied when our physical prowess is limited. Our mental capability is limited. When we realize that, we want to transcend such limits. Because our nature is that we are beyond limits. So, who am I? Well, I am divinity. Divinity is beyond all limitation. That's what we are. And this teaching is being given by the scriptures of Vedanta. And, and those teachings are given in certain sentences. Those sentences are called great sentences. In Sanskrit, they are called Mahavakyas. Tattamasi, you are that divinity. Aham Brahmasmi, I am the divinity. What I consider as my soul, that is divinity. I am Atma Brahma. Then Sarvam Khalidam Brahma, everything is divinity. These are all Mahavakyas. And if these Mahavakyas are saved, saved, and the rest of the Hindu scriptures are lost, then you will see that the scriptures have been saved. So, the answer to the question, who am I, is that we are divinity. We are divinity. That's what we have to know. We have to experience that divinity. So we have to give up our ego because ego is something which is owned by us. We are the owners of our ego and the owner and the object don't cannot be the same. We cannot be our ego. That's why that I and ego has to be replaced by divinity. <laughs> That's what some scriptures teach. Replace your I with thou, that means divinity. Thank you for your patient hearing.